Hello, my name is David Halsey. I'm an orthopedic surgeon at the University of Vermont Medical Center Orthopedics and Rehabilitation Center. Welcome to this segment on surgical treatment for hip osteoarthritis. You'll see on this picture an example of a healthy hip joint. You can see the round ball, the round socket, and the space in between. That space is filled with healthy cartilage that supports your joint and allows for a painless range of motion. The other picture, called osteoarthritic hip joint, shows a very different problem. Here you have no joint space left. If you look carefully, you can see the bone ends are actually hitting each other. There's no shock absorption there, so this is a case with advanced arthritis of the hip. So the first question is, boy, I've heard a lot about hip replacement, but do you have to replace the entire joint? I heard in knees they can do partial knee replacement. How about for a hip? Well, the hip and knee are very, very different joints. The hip is actually a ball and socket. So if you just replace the ball or just replace the socket, you leave the disease on the other side. It just won't work. So the best treatment for osteoarthritis, if first and second line treatments of medication and exercise, maybe injection, therapy, don't work, is complete or total hip replacement. So let's look at that. The images you have in front of you show you sort of the steps of hip replacement. The picture you saw before was a diseased hip joint. Here the surgeon has removed the diseased ball and we replace the diseased ball and socket with the parts you see on the right. There's a socket, the plastic liner, the ball, and the stem. Here's a picture before and after. So on the left is the arthritic hip joint and on this patient's right hip, you can see it with a little R on the picture. And on the opposite picture is an immediate post-op x-ray. We take this in the operating room. And you can see a very different situation now, can't you? You can see the shiny uh, white uh, uh, images there. Well, those are the replaced parts. The socket, the ball, and the stem. Another question that you might be thinking is, well, how should I have my hip replacement done? Well, ideally, that's a conversation with you and your surgeon, of course, because the surgeon will have his or her way that they feel is best for you, and it's not the same for every patient. But the two main ways we do hip replacement at the University of Vermont is either through a posterior approach called the minimally invasive posterior approach or through an anterior approach called the minimally invasive direct anterior approach. Just to keep it straight, anterior means front, posterior means back. But just to give you a baseline, the minimally invasive posterolateral approach is done laying on your side. After you've had your anesthetic, you'll be placed, positioned on your side comfortably, and the surgeon makes a small incision, about four or five inches, on the side of your hip, just behind the bony prominence. And that surgery is done over the course of about an hour and a half to two hours. Well, what about if I'm a candidate for direct anterior surgery. Should I ask about that or is it right for me? Well, the answer is, like so many things in medicine, it depends. It depends on the severity of your hip arthritis, your range of motion, the health of the tissues around the joint, your muscle mass, and your overall size. So working with your surgeon will come up with the best surgical approach for you. So let's talk a little bit more about the mini posterior total hip replacement. Many times we'll use computer-assisted surgical planning and navigation to help make sure that the components or implants go in properly in the right orientation to make sure you have a good stable hip for the rest of your life and in order to get the width and length of the leg proper. So we'll use what are called smart instruments to help, especially in the most challenging cases. Now let's talk a little bit about direct anterior approach total hip replacement. Again, in, under either general or spinal anesthetic, this time you're laying down on your back and we use a special table to help position your leg properly. The surgery can be done safely over the course of one and a half hours to two and a half hours. It might take just a little longer in certain cases, but sometimes that's really worthwhile. We also have the ability to use x-ray during surgery, whether it's posterior or anterior. And in fact, most of the time we will use motion picture x-ray during anterior hip surgery to make sure that the socket gets placed in exactly the position we want, 
The size and alignment of the stem are proper, and again, the leg length and width are, are the best they can be for you. So using x-ray can be quite helpful, especially with direct anterior surgery. Now, we used to get a lot of questions about something called hip resurfacing. And hip resurfacing is another way to manage advanced arthritis of the hip. And instead of replacing the entire neck of the upper end of the thigh bone, we just would cap it with a cap of metal on the end. And so it sounded like that might be less invasive or better to recover with. But in fact, we've learned some things over the last decade. All hip resurfacing components are metal on metal. There's no plastic or ceramic in between. And for some patients, the breakdown of that metal can be really a health concern. So it's a very rare patient in our hands here at the University of Vermont that we would counsel to proceed with hip resurfacing. So again, I hope you find that this video for information about hip replacement surgery has been helpful. And if you need more information, you can reach out to us at the Orthopedic and Rehabilitation Center here at the University of Vermont Medical Center.